Welcome back to day two of Aintree and In the Saddle with Dave and Daryl. It is Friday. Um, we kick off with a handicap hurdle, Dazzler. It's over the middle trip. There's two that I'm like as keen as I can be in a handicap on. One of those is Strong Glance for Ollie Murphy. I backed him earlier in the season, back in October, I think it was. He was beaten half a length by Jack Amar, who's also in this race. There's a 13 pound swing with that horse. This is the right trip for the horse. He likes the track. They've been messing about with him, sending him over fences. They ran him in a couple of jumpers, bumpers. Like Strong Glance, I think, has got a proper chance in there. He's a massive, massive price. So he'll be carrying very few units. There will be some cover that I need to get because of him. The other one that I quite like is Mr. Coffee. He steps up in trip, so he's going in. You can't forget that Sandown run at the beginning of the season. Like, he looked like he could be a proper horse. Um, and then two more just for the sake of it. Stolen Silver's going in there. His form oh. lines with Chantry House going back. I mean, it's a little while, but just before Christmas 2019, there was some form in there with Chantry House that looks quite good now. And I still think this horse has got some more ability. So bit of a punt on him. And then the least punty of all of them is What's Up With You with Kevin Brogan on board for Ben Paulin. He was a steady fourth in the Martin Piper Cheltenham. He always runs his race. I don't think he could win this, but he could get a place. So first race, despite me liking two at big prices, I'm sticking four in. Yeah, I'm struggling to find something in here, but Mr. Coffee, I have to back because I'm so keen on him for the Betfair hurdle of a pound high mark. And he looked like he wanted to step up and trip. So he's going in. Amarillo Sky, the unexposed uh, 128 rated now, 13 pound rise for his last victory, which is ridiculous. Another bloody ridiculous move from the handicapper on another horse. Um, try not to let him win. But uh, he's going in here. What's up with you is in here as well. Strong Glance is in here. And Edward Stone is in here because Edward Stone is rock solid and reliable. Um, look, I haven't got a strong fancy this. Just want to get through this leg, Dave, and get on to, to a couple of bankers. Oi, oi. Well, the first bank clearly comes in the next race. The novices hurdle. It's the top novices hurdle. Two mile race. The horse that would have been second favourite for the Supreme at Cheltenham that missed the festival, Dusart, is going to absolutely dot up in this race. I don't think the two mile division, we've talked about this over and over. I don't think the two mile division is very good full stop. This side of the sea and that side. I don't think the novices over this country are that great anyway, but the exception is something like Dusart. Like, I reckon Dusart could be an absolute aeroplane, so I don't need any cover in here. There's 10 runners in the field. That If he's outside the first three, I'll never do one of these again. He's going to win anyway. Dusart, banker. Yeah. Oh, I, do, I do hope he is a banker material because I do think he's the difference in this race. None of these horses really... Like, this, this novice hurdle division this year has been like, we get to 140 and then nothing else can progress past it. I know we've got a couple in here waiting 143, et cetera, 144, but third time lucky's rate 144, he can't win a handicap, you know. So look, do start. We're hoping to find something a bit decent from the from this side of the water. So do start is definitely going in there. And Gerard, I do like this horse. I think he's a fast little horse, half brother to Charvel in progressing at rates of knots, looking for a five-timer. Will he get it? I, I doubt it, but he's going to be there or thereabouts. He'll run his race. He should be hitting the frame for us. Um, and I'm going to put one more in here. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm leave just the two, Dave. Dusar and the Gero. If, if one of those are not in the top three in here, you'd be very, very disappointed. And quite frankly, you don't deserve to win a place for if, if that's the case, really. Yeah, well, we're definitely through. Dusar's going in. And my guy's half-brother's better than yours. Half-brother to Simon Sig. Versus a half brother to Charbel. Wash your mouth out. Anyway, mild main, <laughs> novices chase. Extended three mile when it's three mile one furlong. This ha- I know Aintree, we talk about it being a flat track and obviously the grounds will be quick. This is a this is a trip that you really do need to stay. Um there's like, there's one horse in here that's obviously the most likely horse to win the race and the most talked about horse, which is Chantry House. I don't understand why people are digging him out saying that he's not gonna stay. Like this the point to point where he fell uh, or unseated. He was staying on nicely. He won his point to point after by staying on strongly towards the end of the line. He's just won the marsh at Cheltenham. Like, he deserves to be fab, and there's no reason to really be taking him on. But the slight caveat is, I just don't know about the run from Cheltenham into here, whether it's, I don't know, he's had a couple of times before where he's won well. Oh, shut up. Stop rambling on. Stop no, rambling he's underperformed. On. No, he he's, he's underperformed after a decent performance before. So he needs to go on the slip because I think he's the most likely winner. But I'm getting some cover with Sham Blue, who for me has the single best form over three miles this season when he won the Feltham, albeit the big breakaway jump like a table. But that's not going to help him now. 
The rest of the field has just got too many negatives about him. Like I say, big breakaway can't really jump. Fiddler's a bleeder. Sporting John, you can't trust him. So Shantry House, I think, will win this. But Sham Blue's the only other danger, I think. So them two. No, no Sham Blue. Shantry House, definitely in here. As far as Rome is the only other danger. Um, uh, this horse is progressive. He's a, he's a lovely big chasing type. He's very unexposed after just three chase starts. Called an RPR 163 last time out on heavy ground at Leicester. He could have a bit more to come. There are concerns of him. He does need to step up, but he is definitely going the right way and he's a beautiful looking horse. Look, Shantry House definitely should be winning this. Um, but as far as the Rome, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he put it up to him in the latter stages. So they're the two, Dave. I can't believe a squad of Rome. Like, even in the same breath, he won a class three at Leicester and Chambly won a grade one at Kempton. Right, let's move on before we discuss. You only know that before we come on air. <laughs> no, but no, we know what races they've won. Jesus, right. This race, if we if we don't get through this race in some sort of better agreement, then I think we might have to call this our last ever show because the Melon Chase for me looks fairly straightforward. I mean, I am going for a bit of cover, but. I think Fakir Dudri is going to win the Men in Chase this year. I think he'll win the Men in Chase next year. I think he'll win Men in Chase the year after. He loves it round here. This distance is ideal for him. Just the fact that he was due to run at Fairy House over the weekend makes me think this is a slight bit of an afterthought. So I just want cover for the sake of that. So Politolog and Dashwood Rash were going in there as well. But I'm definitely, I'm definitely through this leg. Fakir is the one that I think should be winning it though. 100%. Banker. Fakir. Da, there it is. Banco, Chase Home, Aloho. Aloho rate 174 after that performance at Cheltenham. My goodness me, there's nothing of that calibre in this field whatsoever. Uh, 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 going backwards, Politolog, the 10 year old Politolog who's beaten nothing but handicappers this season and been beaten by first flow at Ascot last time out. Look, I'm telling you now, back here is Banker, Banker, Banker until the, uh, just make sure he's on his slip. Nice. All right, well, we're starting to get more in agreement. The Topham Handicap Chase, hopefully we can't go too far wrong with this because it's not one I dig into too deeply, but I think we've got similar trail of thoughts on these types of horses. Live Love Laughs going in for me because he jumped the national fences so well a couple of years back, despite never really ever looking like he wanted four and a half miles. So this triple suit, um, I think he's got a favourites chance. Vizio Man's going in more for the fact that every man and his dog is tipping this horse up. So I feel like I'd be a mug if I didn't put him in and this was the leg that cost me. But one that I do quite fancy from a form perspective is Precious Cargo. Um, I liked him for a couple of races at Cheltenham this year and they skipped the festival. So that makes me think that they like him too. Um, the nagging doubt about him is he was really poor over hurdles here when uh, Felix Dizier, I think it was, dotted up off the front. So the only tiny nagging doubt with him is that. But I think Precious Cargo's got a proper chance. So they're my three. Yeah, I think he's got a proper chance. No, I like this horse. I think he could be a bit of a beast. Uh, he's not really achieved what he's, uh, what he's, you know, what, what's been expected of him. He ran really well at Warwick last time behind the spire to take. And he just looked like he was just going to power away from the field. And he, he got caught just tired. That was after a bit of a break. That was on soft ground. I think he's better on better ground. And uh, that came after a wind operation, second one after a wind off. So I think he should go really well. And Nicky Henderson's got a great record in this race. It's Press Chicago, definitely in there for me. Um, who was the other one? Uh, senior Citizen's going in there for me. He's undoubtedly well handicapped from this mark of 137. Um, I, I think the better ground is definitely going to help him see out this trip. He didn't really stay at Aintree, um in the uh, behind Bow Bay in the Grand Sefton, but I think he is definitely well handicapped. So Mark one for his term for him is definitely going to put him there and thereabouts. So I'm going to be with him. Um, and the other one I wanted to mention was uh, Raven Hill Road for Sue Smith, 10 year old. Looked better than ever last time. Pretty much a career best run at Doncaster. I think this horse could be well suited to this sort of test. So, uh, He's going to go in here, a bit of a chancy one, but um, a likeable horse nonetheless. Second run after a wind-up again. Looking the wind-up angle in this day, um, but I do think Precious Cargo's got a massive chance. Um, I do like Live, Love, Laugh at the top of the market, but as of once in 2018, I think, so um, just struggles to get, get his head in front. A lot of whispers about, about for that one, though. I like yeah, when people say that. A lot of whispers about for that one. I went, who? Live, Love, Laugh? What? The, oh, the favourite at the head of the market. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we all need to be told the obvious sometimes, don't we? And I'll tell you something obvious in this last race. Brave Man's Game does not win the uh, three-mile novices hurdle. I thought they should have stuck him over the middle trip distance. So for that reason, and the fact that he's going to be very short, 
and I want to win a big pool, so I'm hoping he bombs out. I'm getting him beat in this. There's three places that will be up for grabs anyway. I'm going to stick three horses in. I'm going to go for the tricast. Cape Gentleman goes in, won the dove cut at Kempton over two miles. I love two mile speed for these three mile horses. And he's a horse that definitely wants the trip. So he's definitely going in. Streets of Doyen wants to run on concrete. This is going to be quicker ground than it was at Cheltenham. And he ran pretty well there. I think if they're a bit more confident with him, that he could he could really go well in this. So he's definitely going to be there or thereabouts. And then like a semi-punty one is Galley Hill. He flashed his tail on debut, which is a, I'd normally just put a line through the horse for the foreseeable future. But he's probably priced accordingly after getting beat the last day. Like I think he's a double figure price, might be carrying fewer units than if it had reversed the roles that day. So Galley Hill goes in for a bit of a wild one. But Brave Man's game, I don't think he's going to even place in this race. You, how much do you get lying for? Um, we'll talk about that offline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, look, um, he didn't look like to me he was screaming out for three miles just yet in his career. Um, readily put in his place, albeit by a very good horse, uh, Bob Bollinger and uh, uh, Demental. But take those two Irish horses out of the race. He was, he only just beat Bear Giles. Um, it was half a length behind him, and he was staying on strongly that Bear Giles. I uh, just questioned Mark. I fancy him for the Ballymore as well, Brave Man's game. I'm a little bit silly, but I am going to take him on here. Although this is much, much weaker, you, you, you must admit, you know, I am going to take him on. Um, the Albert Butler this year was terribly, terribly run. Uh, not terribly run, but just a terrible renewal in all. Um, barely any horses have made above 140. Uh, Oscar Ali, I, he was a surprise package for me. So I'm going to give him another chance in this. He finished second in that race. That was only his second one on good ground. Um, and his form figures are now 1-2 on good ground. And I just think he's got a little bit of progression to come on, on this sort of surface. So, Albert Barton's second, Oscar Elite's going in. Cape Gentleman's going in as well. Not too, too sure if I like to step back up the three miles. I'm going to stick him in. Um, and Gally Hill was going to be the other one I was going to stick in. But now you've stuck him in, I'm not going to do it. Um, you've given him the kiss of death. I'm going to stick in... Um, I'm going to stick him in one at a big price. So, I'm going to stick in Pat's Fancy um, on good, back on good ground. He uh, didn't really run his race, race in the Albert Bartlett, but there's bits and pieces of form that uh, suggest that he could go well in a, in a race like this. Whether he's good enough to beat Brave Man's game, I'm not sure, but I, he will he will definitely stay the trip. So, perhaps fancy him in the other one at a big price. Fair play. Yeah, well, don't worry about him beating Brave Man's game. Brave Man's game's play slow, mate. That's where the angle is with him. Oh, Anywho. is it? Play slay. Tell, yeah, tell him all how much you're going to do it for. I mean, we've got to talk about that offline. Um, <laughs> that wraps up in the saddle day two at Aintree. Look, there's a couple of fiddly races on day two. We, there's no doubt about that. But this is the sort of pool that I think is going to pay quite nicely. Obviously, if you agree with us, you can get involved in either mine or Daryl syndicates. If you disagree, then put your money where your mouth is. Go pick your own. Or, of course, don't. Don't. Just do what you want, basically. But anyone can be a syndicate captain and anyone can create their own slips. You can do solo. You can do those syndicates. We will be back for Saturday preview as well for the Grand National, where I've got an absolute double nap on the Saturday the two absolute bankers. So if you've suffered all the way through this and watched to the end, then it'll be worth watching Saturdays as well because cash money's. And uh, how did they get in contact with you with, about the lay of Brave Man's game? If they can have, what is it, a maximum of £500? They can have. Uh, I won't be laying individuals. They can meet me on the exchange about 10 minutes before the <laughs> off. <laughs> Please gamble responsibly. 